Welcome to VaderBox. I'm Bambi Francisco, and with me is Ezra Royzen. He's a digital media investment banker. He's also our VaderBox regular. And this week we have Marissa Meyer. Once again, she's VP of Search Products and User Experience at Google. So, Marissa, thank you once again for uh, being our guest host. And, and this time we're going to look at Vudal. So it's a, another search engine, a bit of video search engine. was founded in 2006. They use facial recognition technology uh, to index search and monetize results. Um, basically, what they want to do is they want to build the largest people in video database. So let's take a look at the pitch. Introducing Vudal, the revolutionary facial recognition digital media platform for indexing, searching, and monetizing video assets. Vudal filters millions of hours of video down to one face in seconds, sees inside the cut, and identifies with precision, accuracy, and relevance. Butyl has been continuously developed over the past 35 years and leads the industry in research, development, and innovation. Real-time indexing of true on-screen appearances creates immediate access to the freshest content and the long tail. Create new media opportunities from existing assets. Attract, engage, and retain customers and visitors like never before. Butyl opens up new advertising platforms with highly targeted advertising campaigns. And Butyl is rapidly building the largest people in video reference database in the world. News, sports, entertainment, advertising. Never waste time searching for video again. With Butyl, it's in the cut. Watching that, I was thinking I was doing a bunch of searches on before. I wonder how what they would come up with Tina Fey, and if they would actually show Sarah Palin. They would with have Tina Fey. great content. Do you content. think that they would do it? Do you think that they'd get that? I think so. I think, but I think the bigger uh, for me. I mean, first off, I went and played around with it on Reuters because Reuters has an implementation of it, and it was cool. It was limited. It wasn't a huge amount of content, so I don't mm -hmm. know if there's that tells us anything in terms of the complexity of the problem and not indexing and the difficulty it takes to actually build a big library. So I don't know how big the actual library is. In concept, very cool. I think the Tina Fey and Sarah Palin concept is an interesting one, right? Because mm -hmm. how do you deal with lookalikes? Right. Right. Yeah. And so it, it's interesting. I think that what the research that this is based on is they're trying to solve a very hard computer science problem and they have a lot of technical insight mm -hmm. here. So what I really like about this is there's a core of technology that could be de deployed as mm -hmm. a video search engine or could be deployed in any other number of ways. Mm -hmm. I think what's hard about this is that the problem is changing as they're rolling out the solution. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, well, 10 years or 20 years ago, there was a set of celebrities right. that people were the only people who appeared in videos, and that's who you needed to identify. Mm -hmm. right. Now, with the dawn of YouTube and video cameras and, you know, built into almost every digital, you know, every digital camera as well as phones, it means there's a lot more faces in videos, and it means right. that as that starts to explode, as you start to see hundreds of millions of people, billions of people in videos, means right. there's going to be a lot more people who look like Sarah Palin. Right. Or look right. like, you know, so you go looking for one face and you start seeing people who look like them. And it becomes a much harder problem when you hit that kind of scale. That said, the base of technology here is, is really solid. I've looked at this company before and, it's, and it's, it's clear that it can be deployed in any number of ways. And that, that flexible technology core, I think, is and really they're, important. They're testing it out with Reuters. It looks like they're testing it out with Reuters. And it looks like they're doing some speech to text with it. I searched for uh, McCain and searched for, uh, you know, I, you should have run four years ago when I'm not President Bush, and, and they gave me those clips. It just it took me some time to actually go through the clips to actually zero in on that actual time. So um, it looks like they're doing um, some, you know, a good job getting some of the, getting you something at least. And they were also to doing to, to that to the long tail problem. They were doing some. Um, Facebook and social network tagging, where you could go in, you could tag a face and say, "This is this person," which actually could be an interesting surrogate in some cases yeah, for getting for getting um, an ability to identify people and do facial recognition on 
more random type people. Because if you assume what you need are the celebrities plus the people you know, right. and those are the people you really need to identify in videos, it makes the problem much more tractable. And I right. think it's a very interesting yeah. way I think of Rhea getting did around that. that. I think Rhea did that where you actually went in. I'm pretty sure it was Rhea where you actually went in and you actually had to tag names of people. And I think you mm -hmm. do need sort of the author, human author data along with speech to text along with this. I think this sort of gets you the first sort of indexing and then you need speech to text to get in deeper and then you need humans to actually go in and actually provide even more metadata to make it useful. And it's important to recognize that those are very different technologies, right? So I think that what Butyl has been doing really well mm -hmm. is image detection, you know, mm -hmm. facial recognition. Those are really hard problems. There's another type of hard problem which of course is speech to text. Can you get transcripts out mm -hmm. of these videos and search them? Right. But that's a very different type of technology sure. to develop. Some of the same machine learning principles apply, but I really think they're much further ahead on the image detection than they are on, on the speech to text piece and really how to lace that into a video. Can this, what's the business model? Can this company make money? I believe GoToIt, which I mentioned before, is trying to tackle this problem with trying to do in-search video, um, in-video search, and I believe they also had another business which was they, made, they had a consumer facing business. Where, where you could also search. And, and I don't, uh, where a consumer can actually just search for video. And I don't believe, I believe they stopped that business. And now they're just selling to, they're sort of white labeling the search to big media companies, and which I believe this is what uh, Butyl is doing as well. I mean, is that the model for this company, you think? I mean, I, we're, we're at me, and I'm more conservative than probably a big company like Google has huge resources to approach big problems, which is a great advantage. But where I come in is from a startup up, I would try to find places where I could make business models that work using this technology. So is there government agencies or is there educational institutions or financial institutions or places where they have very acute needs for technology, I mean needs for information, and I can monetize pretty directly those things because I think it's tough to do broad-based consumer stuff, at least now, with people just trying to find certain kinds of things being said in, you know, when, find me when, uh, uh, Tom Cruise jumped on the couch. You know, I mean, I so think the trick they, is. They you know, shouldn't be going after TMZ or Fox. I mean, maybe, or and, and maybe of People magazine. Media companies. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't make a living. Um, I don't think they could. They'd make a huge living just being a, a feature on a few portals for celebrities. I think the trick is going to be how do you actually find things which will get a but pretty substantial revenue. I'm not sure that's a feature. I mean, it's an essential part of of identifying content that's going on the internet because people are not, cons when people consume stuff on the internet, they consume in discrete chunks, right? And so you right. need to be able to identify that and you can't have a bunch of people sitting there and transcribing this stuff and you know, totally determining agree. where you stick an ad in. So you need this automated process in the big media, consumer media space. And I think that's what you're hitting on. I think when you look at search overall, do people want a video search engine or do they just want a general search engine where maybe the best answer is a video or maybe it's an image or maybe, or maybe it's text. I think people, people generally want that broader type of search engine. Right. So I'm not sure that the video search engine is the right way for them to go. But the great thing about this business is it's got real technology at its core. Right. So maybe it gets deployed as a video search engine, maybe it gets deployed in a way of auto-tagging videos and through mm -hmm. those tags mm -hmm. then you can ultimately address ads. Maybe it's the analysis where it can tell that there's actually a moment of pause and we can insert an ad here or there. Mm -hmm. Because there's a, a, a flexible core there, it really means that you can deploy in any number of ways to make money, either through licensing your technology or deploying it in a new sure. way. Sure, white labeling and people who are doing video. Is this something Google would look into, would look at, or is working on? Well, I think that it's clear for us that video is a big part of what people are looking for. Yeah. And when we rolled out Universal Search, we took news, local books, images, video, put them all into search. But it was clear that the most visceral change was the video. The fact that you could type in how to tie a bow tie on Google, and suddenly, instead of getting garbled prose, get a nice video that just showed you how to do it. That's a much better answer for your search. So we know right. that video is big. I think that we're looking at some of the technologies, speech to text, you know, image recognition. I right. think that all of those types of things are things that we need to look at as, yeah. we, as video plays a larger and larger role. I think that where the breakthrough will come from is interesting. It's hard to predict. I think personally that speech to text is a little bit further along yeah. as a scalable technology mm -hmm. than uh, facial recognition or image detection is, but it's, it's hard to say. And in terms of accuracy, it's probably further along as well. So, they can't beat humans. 
Do you Humans are just check? expensive. <laughs> <laughs> they are expensive, but um, I pulled out this quote from Jeff Zucker. He's the president of NBC U, and he said the biggest challenge is to effectively monetize internet video um, because he doesn't want to end up trading analog dollars for digital pennies. So this is definitely something useful, and Big Me is definitely taking a look at it. Reuters is already taking a look at it, so um, I guess that's what we have to do: is just check out Reuters and check out its uh, progress. Yeah, but I mean, but the difference is between an, an, a linear programming. And online video is mm -hmm. linear programming is all about longer form. It's about forcing the ads down your throat. Whereas online, people have people can move much more nimbly through experiences. And so I think this is good. You have to, you can't. The two are just so different and and and, and have very different use cases. And how you're going to monetize them is going to be very different. No, yeah, and it's going to be challenging. And you mentioned the the, the challenge of just lookalikes and all of these people and all yeah. about just mashing them up, mashing up all different types of content too. Yeah. So that just makes it a, a difficult. Problem. So anyway, okay, no liquid scenarios um, minute for today. So, uh, but Marissa, we're going to have you back one more time. We're going to take a look at another company. So, thanks for joining us as our guest host and Ezra Royzen. Thank you always. Thank you for having for me being again, here. and again, and yes. again. Yes, and mm -hmm. you've been watching Vader Box. I'm Bambi Francisco. We'll see you next time on Vader TV.